the campaign map. There's four different teams. They don't correspond to Grand Alliance or anything. They're all endless spell puns. Uh, Gentlemen of Blue Gish, Burning Reds, Purple Suns, Emerald Life Sworn. Uh, over the league, based on your wins and losses in matches, you earn basically hash marks for your team that you can put on enemy territories. Cool. Then right before the final battle, I do some dice rolls that's modified by the number of hashes on territories and it determines if they change control. So as you can see, Red's been doing pretty well. They're kind of conquering their corner of the map. Green and blue are also doing pretty good. Purple's gotten pushed back. Purple just has here, 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 here. Um, territories are important because for every two fortresses, so capital's worth two and every two other territories that your team has, you get one of these every game. This is a Dapper Nurgling power card. Dapper Nurgling's power is mighty. And you can spend these during the game to reroll any one dice. Still can't reroll a reroll. Cool. Um, teams that have less, so purple only gets two, green and blue get three, red gets four. Um, but purple can reroll their command trade and artifact results for their initial warband. Green and blue can reroll their command trade or their artifact result for their initial warband, and red doesn't get to reroll anything. But they get more rerolls during the week. Um, the results of one league carry over to the next. So originally, all the, each of these guys just had three territories in the corner, and there was a bunch of neutral territory in the middle. That's all gone now, and we're all knocking at each other's doors. And does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah, it's pretty cool. All right. So. Like the roll for. Oh, four. the the names. Um, you can change teams between leagues. But if you stay with the same team for consecutive leagues, you can put your name on a blank territory, and then you get a specific ability for that territory that you can use once per game by spending one of your Dapper Nurgling cards. So you can see there are, uh, are many people who have their names on territories. And your name stays there until you switch teams or that territory gets conquered by your enemies, which has happened to uh, poor Ethan over there. He used to have the Black Iron Peninsula. No, that was, uh, that was, oh, poor yeah. Jay. Okay, sorry. Poor Spider Fan guy over there. He's Seraphon guy now. Oh, sorry. They look so similar. <laughs> Seraphon guy. Yeah, um, Goblins and Skink look so alike. They do. No, no, I mean the player. Seraphon oh, guy. Seraphon yes, yes. guy and Spider Fan guy look really similar to each lot. other. Like I've never seen them in the same room together, though. But, uh, yep, that's the campaign map. All right, this so. is Ethan. Ethan's going to be playing the Dispossessed. Mm -hmm. no, dispossessed. So is, so All right, show them to me. I've got ten long beards. They have the uh, hammerous heads because of these are kind of kitbashed with some uh, leftover bits that I had. I had lost a lot of the original bits. And I've got ten uh, iron breakers. And I've got ten coilers here in the back. I've got a uh, runesmith back here. And the warden king. Warden King is here, Runesmith back here. Yeah. And that is. Do you want me to do like a Ethan's lowdown of my army? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, really, my longbeards kind of buff everybody. And, these, and the, my longbeards and my Runesmith buff everybody. They, they also provide some defense, but my Iron Breakers are incredibly yep. defensive. Yeah. I get to do all saves with anybody with a shield. And the whole kind of objective with the army, what you do, the strategy will typically be is to hold off things to prevent them from getting to your. Uh, so shooting line in the back, so my coilers will basically just be shooting summon, with impunity over my line, my unbreakable jumps, line. So it's kind of like uh, an anvil with a ranged cannon. Nice. Alright, once again, that's if Ethan's Dispossessed. This is the first week. Okay. You gotta have reserve the, in addition to. Oh my gosh, they're so loud. First week of the Path to Glory, path to glory Road to Renown. Instead of yes. adding a follower, instead of adding a follower. I'm Skaven Guy, uh, no as Byron. Uh, these are my Skaven. Check it out, we have uh, Puke Rat the Unclean on his Plague Furnace, uh, escorted by Gut Belch the Fowl, and then we've got 30 Plague Monks. Uh, who are going to sacrifice themselves for the Great Horned Rat. Yeah, this is going to be a hard one to hit right here. We'll see about that. What what color are you on the map? I'm going to go with the uh, same color I went with last time, purple. 
Purple. Underdog. I'm going to go with purple again. Good. We need underdogs to fight red. Team Green's going to win it all, though. Just like you know. As long as you don't. Go Team Green. <laughs> Alright, everybody. This is my Free People's Army. I'm not excited. Let's was the let's And the old models. I dusted them off, painted them this weekend. This is my general right here, the guy in the red. You Hans. Hans battle tested veteran. It's a, on a five plus he does a extra command tr point uh, value command yeah, point. <laughs> and then uh now you the artifact that he has now, is the Blade of the Realm, which the means on a six he does a mortal wound. And then here's ten but archers. Then I got a bunch of halflings the in there too. So oh, that no that that halflings. And then fifteen sword guys. This guy is just hanging out right here. This crazy dude. He's kind of morale. He's just a model in there, and they are backed up. So right now, they by a knight and contour. He's going to help the puny little humans out in the magic, f in the hero phase. And that is week one for Roger. Yeah, I'll take this.